Okay, now I want to head and cut all the notches out of the surfaces. So um, all these surfaces are ready to uh, lay them out and label them as well. So what we can do, we can just turn off the uh, our cut X layer. We're just left with the um, with the surfaces. By this time, also we can select all curves, which is uh, the contours at the beginning. Either you can create, put them on a different layer um, or just delete them because you don't need them anymore. But just for sake, we'll just save it on a on a different layer. And we'll just turn them off. Now what we need to do is uh, label the pieces. So when when we construct the three uh, the model itself, we'll know where each piece goes and what's the order. And now since I lay them out on a uh, on a sequence, knowing that the left will be x1 and it will go x2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. In this case it's in which uh, you have uh, the si uh, two surfaces on one single plane. What I do is just name them x 1a and this one will be x1b and that's my naming conventions so what we can do is um, what I like to do and to split this up we do a text object we make sure this uh, only occur and you can go ahead and do one by one but what I like to do and also put inches maybe uh, 0.5 I like to do is go x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on. And if you train your your fingers, you can actually do it really fast. Not sure how many pieces are there, but um. Oh, maybe we don't even need the space. So 25. And select OK. So here we have all our labels. I'll go ahead also and create another layer. Put them labels and change the color maybe to red. And put this on this layer. So now what we're gonna do is. Uh, We're gonna just drag the labels on top of the our surface. Now we can just do um actually we can select all the contours now and get the silhouette of the contours. We can just type silhouette, join them to make them one single um one single curve, and then we can just delete the uh, surfaces. In this case, if we ever need the surfaces back, we can just do um, um, a surface out of the curves, out of the silhouette. And this is a little bit more cleaner to work with. So what we can do, we can just um, go ahead and drop a label on each of them. And you'll know when you need a another label convention like for example right here it's gonna select this to know where exactly am I what is this? so you, if you see we're gonna need a an A and B so this is gonna be for seven and eight so there was two in our text object seven A X seven B a x b oh x a b sorry just place them here make sure you're on the layer you'll just go and put this together make sure that these are on the same plane so you can confuse yourself yeah 
and the same happened with the other one. So I'll go ahead and put this one somewhere here. And it's also always um, good to have on a different color because when you do um, you put on the laser cutter, um, you're you're gonna use uh, one color to cut the material and as a vector line, and the other one as a raster, which is either raster or like you can just uh, uh, decrease the the power of the laser cut so it doesn't cut through. You just make a mark on top of the the piece. So we can go ahead with X9 here, X10, and so on. Let's see. And if you don't, if you don't want the the numbers to be visible, you can also be really careful. You can place them between the, the notches, in which will be really hard to see. That's up to you. But in, in this case, I don't I'm not very picky about that. So. And the same process will be applied to the uh, the Y uh, surfaces. So there are only 21 surfaces here. And actually on this one, it might not, not even be worth it cutting it because it's just, uh, just going to break. But uh, just for the sake of uh, the tutorial, we'll scale this. So you just type scale, just put it click anywhere to reference and right there you're not gonna even see it when you cut it though and and now what I like to do is um, group these objects so we can just type group so when you select them it will be uh, one single group and you can just do the same thing and press enter to repeat that command And this will be useful when we start arranging them in, in our cutting material. So now, what I like to do is, um, to, well, I guess I really like creating a lot of layers. Well, here we're gonna just a snap. And we're gonna draw our material. So in this case, depending on your the, the dimension of your laser cutter, in this case we're gonna do 32 inches long by 18 inches. Yeah, actually, mm, am I actually I made the model too big? Inches. So let's say that your model is actually four times or five times bigger than what this model is. So we're just going to scale this to five. Um, do you, if you just press an origin and you do a scale factor, you do times five. We'll uh, we'll do it automatically five times on each dimension. So let's say this is our cutting material. What we're gonna do is just we're gonna drag this and put it into place. If you if you're tight on material, like if you're cutting on plexiglass or like a really expensive material, I'll definitely recommend to. Um, have them as close as you can. Sometimes I even rotate them to save some space and also to be uh, more um, sustainable. I don't like leaving like large pieces of uncut material. You know you can actually use them and be more efficient. So this is how you place your objects. 
for the laser cutter. And, and also to get the, the other side, um, in this case uh, the, the Y surfaces, uh, you'll do the same process and since they're like on a different on a different axis, you're gonna have to rotate all the all the curves to have them on the same plan with the X uh, surfaces. So let's see. You can even let me on tighter and put in this piece here. And for example the um, the Y uh, surfaces you're gonna have just to once you do all the process you're just gonna have to rotate them so if you go once you're done with the process of labeling them and cutting the notches you can just go to one of these views and just click rotate uh, type rotate just rotate them to the same plane and you will just put them in your cutting material. So now how do you explore this? Uh, I usually select all the curves and if you put export selected you can you, you can either do um, I know people do CAD, DWG but um, in, I like doing a, a WStrator file which is a vector vector software as well, so you can just name it laser file or whatever you want to name it. Just put save and then it's going to ask you, you, you always want to have preserve model scale and if you did it uh, uh, on one to one you would want to have this the same value as the other one, so one inch or one inch and when you go to your um, Coral Draw, this is what we use on, on my institution. You can just open the Adobe Illustrator and you proceed with the laser cutting. So I hope this was really helpful and I hope to see your models. And if you want to see more tutorials, subscribe and any questions, just let me know. Thank you.